Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the discussion session called Pro Cargo Base Growth and Throughput What Goods Will Compete for a Share in Transportation. Good, af good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, friends. My name is Sergei Ryshkin. I'm the editor, senior editor in the agency Argos Oil Transport in charge of uh, oil transport and uh, since recent time also dry goods about which we are going to talk about. The objective is not quite easy because on the one hand this discussion session is in the end of the day. On the other hand the topic is really exciting and it is interesting and not quite sophisticated and very specific, very particular in terms of uh, the cargo, but we also have the top quality of the panel and uh, well, joking apart uh, though there have been certain jokes that we suggested to start with, but um, we will start down to the point about the coal. Uh, coal still remains an important type of cargo. Let me illustrate this by just a few figures. For example, the Russian Railways company collects uh, requests from heads of enterprises to understand what's in store till the year 2035. And, uh, these are the requests for millions of tons of coal. For example, for 2025, it is 414 million tons, which is uh, 200, uh, 240 million tons uh, um, bigger than last year. So, and in the year 2035, the overall volume to be consumed will be 625 million tons. There are also other estimations, for example, by the Skolkova Center or the Russian Academy of Sciences that say that uh, no further growth is expected, that the economy of the world will give up the idea of using coal because of alternative uh, fuels. Uh, and so we, there are things to discuss. I, I will announce now the panel. Alexei Shilo, Deputy Managing Director at R Russian Railways, Head of Center of Corporate Transport Services, Russian Railways. And I'm giving the floor to Alexei so that he would take it um, straight away and outline the market situation. Good afternoon, Nelly. Good evening, dear participants. I would like uh, to make my presentation rather brief, but meaningful, uh, with a few messages that I prepared. First, we all understand that today the world is changing dramatically, faster and faster with each year. The structure of consumption is changing, new goods appear, these goods and products are consumed in the regions where earlier they didn't used to uh, be consumed and the first message is that there are two trends clear trends important for rush uh, for railways number one is that there are certain challenges in terms of the unspecified future consumption of coal as we understand, there is the Paris Agreement, which imposes certain liabilities and applications on the consumers of coal. Besides, alternative sources of energy supply is developing, renewable uh, wind power and uh, very active development of nuclear power. and many countries are looking for some alternatives to coal and very actively consider technologies of uh, hydrogen. Uh, what is it? This is pure energy which means that the CO2 which is 
which um, is um, uh, generated through this type of energy generator. So we'll form layers and uh, quite soon we can envisage that such um, experiments like uh, conducted by Kawasaki Heavy Industries will become more and more frequent. Many Japanese companies have become shareholders in the uh, coal uh, companies, so they are looking for alternative energy generation and we have to keep track of that to understand where we're going to and Tokyo is quite an interesting example because it is densely populated and quite uh, soon we can see that Taiwan, Korea and Hong Kong, for example, will also join this search for alternative energy resources. So there are challenges and there are searches for solutions. On the other hand, there is a trend associated with oil products. So oil will be more and more transferred through pipelines because the pipe is the cheapest, is the most simple and straightforward way of transportation of crude oil. In future there will be of course certain changes in this industry as well, but the trend is clear. And uh, thinking about these two above mentioned trends, we can estimate uh, the amount of uh, cargo to be transported in future, like 300 million tons of cargo. And uh, when we want to specify these volumes uh, per year, then of course uh, we will need to rely on certain methods of uh, estimating the capacities of some chargeable devices which would accumulate energy and of course then the entire system of energy supply will be different. What can we expect? Uh, we can develop certain mechanisms of hedging railway operations. And why should we do so? Why is it important? First of all, the market situation, the prices in the market and all the fluctuations in the demand they are typical of current times, but infrastructure was built early and will last for some time. And 10 years ago, we just didn't expect that the consumption of coal will increase in uh, some parts of the world. But the infrastructure pays back uh, in dozens of years. So we need the forecasts to invest in future into the infrastructure and something which will serve our purposes. And if we don't understand what to construct and how to construct, then this infrastructure will not serve the future needs. And uh, it's very important to ensure that today's forecasts would be adapted to several scenarios and uh, the system of uh, amendments need also to be designed like some benchmarks which would be the triggers or correspond to certain triggers in the changing situation. And another point is that we need more close cooperation with those who provide these cargoes for transportation. In my understanding, one of the basic methods that can be used in forecasting the uh, cargo flows is the creation of the environment which will provide for the infrastructure in the amount which will be needed. And uh, these amounts should be based on most optimistic forecasts. And uh, 
uh, that's our more or less shared opinion. But a very important observation is that the interaction of, of different stakeholders in developing this infrastructure should uh, involve also some sort of responsibilities and liabilities. So there should be take or pay contracts, for example, as a guarantee that the cargo will be moved along certain routes. So sorry if I sound a little bit hectic. Well, thank you very much. I think that you have managed to put it all together. Collaboration, flexibility, forecasting different scenarios, uh, and also finding certain solutions for different scenarios. Thank you very much. Now, we are moving now to uh, the topics of agriculture, and uh, it feels like yields of wheat of grains last year have introduced certain changes and involved the activity more activity on on the part of the vtb bank and so many other uh, innovations that we can keep track of so i'm giving the floor to olga polisyukova deputy minister of agriculture of the russian federation please could you share your vision of the future uh, production of grain, how much needs to be moved uh, or Im exported, and whether different modes of transport compete for that, so please. Hello, dear colleagues. First of all, thanks for the opportunity to be here. We wouldn't like to fight the coal, and we only have 3% share. However, in the recent years, Agricultural cargoes uh, are our focus, though we are not a priority yet for the railway transport. This focus and uh, attention to agricultural cargo is based on some objective factors. For example, in 2017 we had a record uh, crop and um, we had to take urgent measures to take the product to the customers and I would like to thank the colleagues from Russian Railways. Uh, they established task forces and uh, managed all this uh, cargo. So the state policy for import substitution also had an impact and uh, we successfully managed it and now we have even export potential. And in May, um, May decrees of the government of, and of the president to have a task set of 110 million to be transported and a quarter of exports will be with grains and Russia recently became one of the world leaders and we plan to keep this trend. This year we adopted the long expected uh, strategy for our industry and uh, by 2024 will grow from 113 million tons to 140 million tons and in 2035 will grow to 175 million tons. Um, grain transportation can be divided into short distance transportation inside the country and exports. As for our domestic industry here, of course, motor transport wins and about 80% of transportation falls within motor transport. And I think this trend will persist in the nearest years. Why do they win? Actually, it's about the price. They're a lot cheaper and they're, they have better mobility. Agriculture is always related to climate and nature. And unfortunately, we cannot uh, predict where we'll have a lot of grain and uh, less grain so motor transport allows to do that much faster uh, railway transport has 36 percent and motor transport about 60 percent but here railway can compete with motor transport currently we are working with the russian railways uh, on the project of 
routine. We have only um, about 60 silos across the country which are ready to participate. So we send drafts for legislation uh, in order to launch this project. We also have um, a demand for port throughput capacities and we are implementing a number of projects in the northwest because we need more seaports over there which are non-existent for the moment and Russian Railways potentially can transport uh, our freight from, from, through Russian Baltic ports. Also we outlined our demand in the increased throughput capacity in the Far East and in the Azov and the Black Sea region and we plan that Russian Railways uh, will implement those uh, long-term program activities and the increase of throughput capacity will be connected to the new terminals. Uh, speaking about grains, it's our priority, but we should not forget about uh, oil extraction products. Out of 110 million tons, uh, 16 million tons is um, oil bearing products and we use rivers and railways for transportation. This year we sent three trains consisting of more than 100 containers and um, oil was uh, transported in a non-conventional way with, in with the inserts and more than 2000 ton were delivered successfully. The only problem is that oil gets to Vladivostok and then goes to China and Southeast Asia by sea because uh, there is a problem of uh, crossing the border by trains. But we are dealing with that. Also, our task is to increase exports to Asia, namely, first of all, dairy products and meat. And here, potential of railway transportation is, of course, related to the shelf life. For example, if we take C, it is cheaper threefold, but delivery time is uh, over 50 days sometimes, so shelf life and the deadline will expire. So now, together with Russian Railways and Logistics Company, we are working on specialized routes and we plan to have uh, loads uh, for transit through Russia and exports to the Asian countries. And summarizing this, I would like to thank the Russian Railways Company and we are happy that we are heard. We ask for many things, but we have uh, our needs uh, met. Thank you. Uh, do you remember knowing Technotrans and their plans, the Vysotsky terminal, if we speak about the northwest? We have um, at least four terminals, and the Ministry of Agriculture received a relevant proposal from us. So it was Vysotsky terminal, we have Batarina Bay, and also we heard about Ustluga. So we'll see who's going to be the first and they will get our priority. Okay, thank you. Let's move on and I think from after grains it makes sense to speak about fertilizers. Fertilizers is about experts and our next speaker Dmitry Bolderev is head of operational logistics of Yevrahim and uh, we found uh, people whom we know with Dmitry and I think that his presentation will be interesting because he's from trading. This means that he knows the volumes and the world market and the trends in this market. So now I would like to give you the floor. So could you please tell us about the plans of increasing fertilizers production in your company, in the industry in general and some areas for experts and how satisfied you are by your interaction with Russian Railways. Good afternoon. I will answer the final question first. 
so we are satisfied with our cooperation with the Russian Railways Company. But of course, just like any other company, we have some issues that we are trying to resolve jointly. And I will mention them in the end of my answer. So I will start with my company. We are uh, carrying about 60 million tons of cargo. And uh, when I mention we, then I'm talking about our stakeholders across different uh, industries. And I don't know whether you know about the percentage of types of cargoes uh, uh, carried on the railway. 31% are coal. Of course, the, this number is changing a little bit. 19 oil products, 10 building construction materials, 10 manganese and iron, and 5% fertilizers. So by 70%, the body of all the cargo types belong to cargo and to the above mentioned materials. It would be very hard for me to justify 5% and speak about trends uh, uh, against the 75% of cargo. But nevertheless, we belong to the top four or five com companies manufacturing fertilizers. Unfortunately, in terms of the volumes of cargo, we are tiny. So 5% is the fertilizers make 5% of all, all uh, cargo transportations. And that involves not only my company, but also many related companies uh, that uh, are included in this 5%. And of course, the big names uh, quite often, I mean, the companies, the brands like Russian railways uh, and such uh, perhaps are not very much uh, keen on cooperation with us, though we would like to have discussions and taking a chance of this meeting, focus attention on uh, such providers of cargo as we are, because unfortunately 1.5 million tons of cargo was uh, just missed by Russian Railways Company uh, over recent years, which could have been transferred, transported, if we uh, had some joint strategy. But the economy dictates its own logics and uh, uh, in this situation, we are we rely on motor vehicles, motor transport. Well, as for our development, we are very dynamic, and uh, as a company, eight to nine million tons will be our surplus of fertilizers. Of most of this uh, will be sent to uh, export. But uh, in my career, I also dealt with uh, sales. And I remember that in 2010, it was 5.5 million tons of fertilizer. Today, 7.5. So out of 30 or 45 million tons produced in Russia, only seven remains in Russia. And I think that the trend will remain at the same level. And uh, I can imagine that in 2025, uh, there will be 140 million tons, and this will feature the surplus of uh, 3 to 5 percent a year. By my assessment, this is the rate by which our industry is developing a year, 300, uh, sorry, for the year 2035. 2025, the growth compared to today's situation will be 30 percent, by 30 percent. Of course, then, we are very interested in watching you, what you do and how you develop and at Russian Railways Company, uh, because we participate in many of the projects and for us, these are major projects. 
the company, our only our company, spent over recent five years about 10 billion rubles for the development of uh, infrastructure that we have been jointly developing. But the, there is much more potential that we can uh, use in future. And here I come back to the idea of discussing how can 5% compare with 75%. I understand it. So this is just uh, incomparable, but um, we are too small, perhaps, for you to care. But well, but uh, there are so many interesting comparisons today that we have heard black swans, and you have just um, mentioned now an elephant and a tiny dog, and so. But taking this opportunity, I would like to tell that yesterday we analyzed ports that are closely linked with operation of railways and again in the ports they plan great great uh, volumes to handle in future volumes of cargo of different sorts so the question to Dmitry is uh, your ports or port based services at which level are they now are you developing or what Yes, we hope that we will develop, we will build some extra facilities and capacities, but there is one big issue, because the water code does not allow uh, many things. Uh, I used to work abroad uh, in Switzerland, for example, and I remember that many things that they uh, regulate they are for the benefit uh, of business development unfortunately here many things uh, make create barriers uh, and complicate our life as businesses so our water code regulates location of certain facilities that are allowed uh, around the water borders for example uh, no chemical facility can be closer to water than 500 meters so we are unique in the world in this way and i, I cannot think of any reason why fertilizers that are handled on the shore everywhere in the world why are they forbidden in russia um, and I mean within the distance of 500 meters to the water but much depends on such regulations but at the same time we have to confess that um, uh, facilities are constructed and they are constructed uh, offshores and this of course means depreciation of the products that uh, but uh, the solutions uh, are found because uh, there are limitations so the project is under construction we are going to achieve the target of 7.5 million tons that we will build uh, the facilities will be built thank you very much we move ahead and I hope that Elena Alkovska is known to all of you and there is no need in presenting her. She is from uh, the director of the Sport and Railway Projects, UMMC. So the question from me is, with reference to your vast experience, which are the ways of improving the capacities of facilities and infrastructure and the availability. Thank you so much for the introduction. Hello, dear colleagues. Indeed, it's a very nice, uh, interesting day, sun and sea, and uh, we're so happy. And we are discussing the burning issues of our industry. Uh, if I may, it seems to me that the first plenary session was about competition or cooperation. So these two things uh, interact because we should compete by uh, cooperating and cooperate by competing. So different freight yards are not uh, competitors. They just support the economy balance of the nation in general. And it is also about the economy of uh, the Russian railways, 
because um, free diversification is good, especially when these goods uh, should be transported to different regions, different distances. Then, speaking about competition, what are they competing about? They're competing about the throughput capacity of Russian railways. This mean, means that we need to construct more facilities in the railways. This means integrated development of the country, development of industry and production, so it's about cooperation again. Accordingly, there was a very right question regarding a connection of uh, plans um, of throughput capacity increase uh, with the seaports. This is crucial and Russian railways should be guided by that as a forwarder and everyone else as well. And we should be guided by private investment. And uh, if you already have private investment, then also public and public private investment, all of that will be in demand. And from our part, we implemented the third stage of our project, that is 40 billion of private investment rules. This is a specialized coal facility. So now it's already stage three of the terminal, specialized terminal for large capacity of handling this kind of cargo. And according to our assessment, there will be not 30, but even 40% of coal in this terminal. And now it's already 50 million port, the first one in the Far East. And it's clear that here we discussed environment and the best technology and uh, different standards. There was such a term from the Ministry of Economic Development that the trend is, uh, and we need, the trend is to be dynamic, but the Far East is not a very new trend because we started working with it back in 2012. It was clear that the economy will look eastwards mostly and all the freight, especially coal, will be oriented uh, to the east. That's why we implemented Trans-Siberian Line 1. And now we are discussing the second line. Also, we spoke about mutual responsibility. As for the seaports and infrastructure, it's not five and ten years. This year, together with Baikal Amur Line, the Vastochny port celebrates its 45th anniversary and we are increasing its uh, capacity. So such infrastructural projects really take time. So here it is important to have trust. Yes, agreements, contracts and mutual responsibility is important, but trust is very important. So we cooperate through competition and we compete through cooperation with all the industries. As for the coal terminal, you know, it's such a good anchor for Russian railways. I mean, anchor freight. Why was it growing? Because coal really occupies the available throughput capacity. And of course, it's a priority for the Russian railways because it is about economy. That's right. So speaking about uh, machinery and machine building industry coal is very good because uh, it won't leave the um, rail so these are production cycles related uh, to the port infrastructure construction etc accordingly the most important thing here is uh, harmonization of the seaport infrastructure development, coal mining facilities, Russian railways, machine builders. Uh, and when all of that gets harmonized, uh, 
Well, you know, it's a very complicated process from the technical, technological and investment standpoint, but it will be the key to our success. But it's not the most expensive. It's a mass freight, but it's not the most expensive freight, you know. Well, yes, if we want to discuss prices, indeed, the prices are going down. Yes, especially in the Northwest. All right, thank you very much. And now let's move on. And uh, we'll skip Mr. Shilo because he will be the one to summarize the discussion. And now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Likharev, Vice President of Logistics and LMK. So, are metallurgists ready to compete with coal people for the access to infrastructure? Yes. Thank you very much. I would like to show certain slides. So, have a look. Uh, let us look at the situation from the bird's eye view. And I'm going to talk not in about uh, the steel production or metallurgical production, but about things that quite often we miss in our discussions. First, when we speak about the development of the infrastructure and increased volumes of cargo, we forget that not the railway uh, is the main um, agent of uh, all our activities, but our buyers, our clients, customers. While these consignees uh, quite often impose requirements uh, which we are obliged to meet, and if we fail, then no cargo will satisfy these consignees. So there is a model of four Ps. So product, price, place, promotion. This is the standard approach and logistics, which is um, developed by us together with uh, carriers, uh, railway transport operators, uh, looks like this. We could just make it like uh, preservation of the uh, and safety of the products that we trans whether transportation influences the quality and the quantity or not. So this uh, cargo can arrive safely or not quite uh, safely. And this is question number one. Second, uh, so different discounts and cost issues, but there are also three, um, the third element, which is the service in terms of speed, and the stability of transportation, how fast we deliver and whether uh, we operate on a regular level, do we have enough capacity for, to satisfy the needs of consignees and uh, facilitation. Facilitation uh, in keeping track of the cargo and if the cargo gets lost then how to find it and how to provide more convenience in terms of data transfer for customers. So all these four areas of concerns um, guide us in understanding what needs to be done, done to give uh, railroad the bigger role in transport system as such. And whether we talk about um, other technologies, electronic devices and so on, so still we need to remember that there are four basic things in which we have to optimize our joint cooperation together with uh, Russian railways and through which we will benefit mutually and we will benefit the needs and interests of our customers. So, for example, there can be such areas of cooperation as, let's say, preservation and safety of our car, uh, cargo. Containers have become so popular, even fertilizers are carried in containers, and I think the, the entire world now moves goods uh, by containers, and we will foresee that all ports will be full of different containers, and uh, containers will serve different purposes and different types of cargo. Another uh, approach can be the decreased amount of cargo damaged during the handling operations. So we need to uh, decrease the 
uh, amount of different uh, uh, services that um, perhaps uh, damage the cargo. But speaking about the costs, uh, the discounts are important and we need to be more transparent and more responsible in forecasting what it will cost uh, when we uh, are planning the uh, transportation of billions of tons. But on behalf of the Russian Railways Company, we would uh, expect more tra transparency uh, in explaining us uh, what will happen, what will follow if we increase the volume of cargo that we need to uh, deliver from one point to another. In terms of service, stability is important. Stability means uh, the availability of infrastructure which will allow transportation of certain amounts of cargo to the destinations that are needed and co more cooperation in such uh, areas will improve the quality of this service. So good examples of such cooperation can be easily found in our practice. Stability also in terms of compliance with the uh, timelines and deadlines. Uh, the Russian Railways uh, has increased the average uh, speed of transport but nevertheless, as for stability, uh, some part of cargo arrives on time and some part of, ta of cargo comes uh, occasionally later. And we need to jointly work on this so that to overcome such uh, gaps and discrepancies. And facilitation, including um, location tracking, based and incident-based uh, management, so that we would understand uh, where the cargo is at every moment of time and uh, that it is managed, it is under control and uh, uh, so that uh, all the corresponding activities would depend on this data. And of course technologies with uh, lots of paperwork, uh, well, is not something uh, which today is normal, so this should be electronic uh, turnover of documents. But uh, when we comply with all these above-mentioned uh, new challenges or issues or requirements, then we could not only uh, cut down the gaps today, but also stimulate further growth. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sergei. Uh, as a feedback, I would like to ask you another question. Having opened the uh, statistics of Rev uh, the Russian Railways company, I can see that there are some negative figures as well. So in some types of cargo, the uh, handling operations and the transportation operations uh, uh, decreased. Uh, so can you forecast what will happen? Well, I will not speak for others. We are preparing for introducing another million tons of uh, metal, steel, and also uh, about 2.5 million tons of uh, uh, raw materials. Uh, we are reconstructing our facilities uh, and uh, uh, we are taking a, uh, a, a break right now. So before we make another breakthrough, which I have mentioned, so we are preparing for another uh, increase in the production of the capacities. Well, but as for the prices, uh, I was preparing for this conference and looked at certain figures. Well, yes, the prices for metal and for similar materials uh, is char are characterized with fluctuation, and this is normal. This is the capacity uh, which allows to... So we are capable to live even at lower prices, but uh, there, there is a reason of uh, alternative years. Some years are more uh, successful and some are not so successful. Thank you very much. Now we are moving to Gazprom Neft. Alexander Nevsky, please take the floor. 
One oil company, you know, told me that uh, coal interferes with them, but what about you? Hello, dear colleagues. Thanks for the opportunity to participate in this discussion. Well, things happen differently. Sometimes they prevent us from something, but for the recent two years, we started feeling certain difficulties. And the word coal uh, be becomes um, kind of um, well widespread when we were representing oil products in Ustluga. Those who know this port, they know the traffic jam that formed there in the end of last year and then in the beginning of this year. And as a result, we had uh, complications. More than 1,000 tons of our freight only was frozen in the tracks of Russian railways. I don't mention other oil companies. Uh, I'm speaking about Gazprom Neft, namely. So in my opinion, only thanks to professionalism of Russian railways, uh, freight forwarders and uh, consigners, uh, uh, this joint effort allowed us to keep the production levels uh, so I would like to thank everyone, but yes, this happens sometimes, but the story was quite banal. Apart from weather factors, they were replacing some equipment there, so that was why. Well, I would like also to say a few words, of course, about the future and the trends. Well, I wanted to speak about the trends in oil processing and there are several scenarios of development for the oil processing industry. Namely, I would like to consider the negative and the conservative scenario because in the positive scenario, oil processing won't grow in our country. That's positive. In the negative or conservative scenario, the oil processing will go down. The main reasons are Changes in tax legislation that happened recently because marginality will move from processing to mining. That was driver one, which can be considered as um, a driver of strategic change. And the second driver is uh, the processes in the um, oil processing factories and the Black oil products share will shrink, while the white oil products share will increase. So in this slide you see the figures of the decrease from 20 to 25 million tons before 2025. The decrease of uh, black oil products will be about 30 million tons. Speaking about black oil products, uh, all those uh, Oil products have been transported by the railway because there's no alternative for the oil processing industry here compared to the white products. Part of it is for the domestic market, but mostly it's for exports. So this means seaports. So when the situation changes and when we have the opportunity to use other means of transport, oil companies will have then the opportunity to choose. Uh, and the main argument here is uh, price and costs because now pipelines are more profitable. If you look at another slide, uh, you will see this negative scenario which can happen to the railway transportation if both factors uh, uh, become actual and uh, before 2025 the decrease of railway transport can be up to 40 million tons um, as for the processing volumes here russian railways have no influence but as for for the volumes uh, being transferred from railway to the pipeline, changes are possible. So what changes might that be and how Russian railways can influence that? 
First of all, that's tariff policy. This can be discussed with the Russian railways. The rules are known and we are ready for this discussion. Secondly, in my opinion, these are digitalization projects declared now by the Russian Railways company and we are ready to implement digitalization. This is uh, prescriptive analytics and uh, seamless technology including data exchange. This is the increase of um, transportation transparency and we are ready to discuss a unified uh, platform which can include uh, consigners, uh, consignees, uh, ports, railways and uh, smart contracts which were discussed in another room today. So all of these areas of development will allow to decrease the costs. When, what Mr. Likharev mentioned, it's a win-win situation because the operational costs will go down and Russian railways and forwarders and consigner, all of them will win and um, it's quite a serious area of development. And the third area, these are new services of Russian railways. This will allow to keep the um, freight and even take some more freights from the motor transport and um, we are working with improving the existing services, uh, for example, delivery at the precise time. And in the West Siberian Railroad, we had a joint project and part of freight, group freight, we tried together with our colleagues to deliver them at the exact precise time and the results were quite positive and Russian Railways uh, met our expectations and considered additional services introduction. And in the framework of the existing uh, directions, these are seaports, these are complicated areas. Of course, this involves timetables and planning and monitoring of the rolling stock. Of course, we are interacting with Russian Railways regarding that and I would like to thank Russian Railways and the colleagues um, and I see that despite the prerequisites, which are not so optimistic compared to other industries, still it's possible to retain the existing situation. Thanks a lot. And I will probably comment a little bit as for the tariff policy and flexible tariff policy and tariff corridors. There's uh, such a classic example. Um, for example, Volume discounts of Russian railways do work and you can see just how desperate seaport people are in one company and uh, they, they said that they are losing volumes due to their clients choosing Russian railways. So that's an issue where we are going to handle our freight and which port, but anyway. So let's move forward. This day started with container transportation and will now also continue with the containers that transport different freights. And uh, I should say that it's clear that certain freights are impossible to be transported in containers, but containers is the growing trend. And for example, um, oil coke, is such a specific product and now we have those volumes uh, which appeared in the railways in semi-wagons and now they started using containers so that's a very obvious trend. So now I'm going to give the floor to Nikita Pushkarev, Director of Rail Logistics Global Ports. Could you please expand on the future perspectives of containers and how are you doing with containers? Are you on time, not on time, etc.? Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Thank you very much for giving me the floor. Uh, Global Ports is the major, one of the major stevedore holdings in Russia, and we are focused on specific 
contain a specific part of business which is container business and the majority of our business operations fall on the container transportation that's why all my comments are related to containers last year the overall volume of handled uh, assets was to one million four hundred thousand TLSS and uh, considering that right now we are discussing transportation by railways, let me give some numbers illustrating the portion from which uh, which was transported by railways. So in last year, one hundred seventy three thousand TLSS by all terminals were handled to and, and carried by uh, railways. It is, uh, of course, obvious that there was export was which was delivered to our terminals and then handled for sea transportation. So, but uh, the import flows and export flows uh, they're comparable. And as I said, 173,000 doses last year. This year, over 10 months, this year we have done. Uh, more than this and basically the container based transportation of cargoes is carried mostly by railways and uh, of course cooperation of our port with uh, operators of uh, railway transportation is very important and proactive but we wouldn't be too naive to say that uh, we are satisfied with everything. When we uh, split the volumes by terminals, the statistics looks very interesting. We own terminals in Northwest and Far East, and two more terminals in Finland. But uh, Russia is our strategy. That's why I'm going to focus on figures illustrating Russia, and mostly Northwest. To our major terminals, there is the first container terminal uh, of all the handled volumes uh, featured 6% only um, carried by railway and petrol export uh, 4% of the overall volumes transferred by uh, were transformed by uh, transported by railway which means that we have a big reserve to grow we can uh, carry much more by railway. St. Petersburg, of course, is very specific because it is a big location, a big consumer. St. Petersburg uh, is the area where containers cannot be uh, carried by underground transportation, but nevertheless, uh, the remaining part of Cargo in the amount of 194,000 TOCs a year can be carried by railway. Another terminal in the northwest uh, provides 50% by railway, and this is very important. This is the main market for cargoes uh, that go to Moscow, and so uh, weekly trains go from St. Petersburg to Moscow with our cargo. If we look at the forest, then we operate there at the uh, terminal in... And by 90% over there, uh, the cargo is carried by railway. The main markets where we take these cargoes to uh, it's again Moscow and uh, about 10 trains uh, a week uh, then starts from Far East uh, in the direction of Moscow uh, not only Moscow there are other destinations and it's very important that for container cargoes uh, the transit time or travel time is very important this transit travel time depends on the time of arrival 
at our terminal, whether the terminal is accepting the cargo or uh, handles the empty uh, wagons. So such factors reflect on the time of the cargo waiting at our terminals. And it is obvious that we are the only, at least in our location, the only container terminal. And around us there are also coal terminals and we compete with charcoal, perhaps mostly in um, handling operations, but this issue is not quite critical. As for transit to Central Asia, uh, if we can count this as the general transit operations, by over 90% this transit to Central Asia goes through our terminal in the forest. One container train a week goes along the route called Primoria 1. This is the container base, the infrastructure, which depends on the railway um, capacity. And there is a big part of transit that could be uh, linked with the seaports, the transit from Japan and South Korea. Today they have been mentioned many times. So this is the transit that goes through the land points but or hubs and we can hardly uh, offer something in this respect but as for our offer then we are looking at the market of uh, the trade between Europe and Japan uh, which is quite a big amount of volumes and for Russian railways 5 to 10 percent of the entire potential uh, is quite tangible and it's quite tangible objective so just to sum up uh, we can see by figures that many opportunities are still not used and puts can offer much more to ra railways than uh, so far they have been uh, putting into operation. So whether preferences should be given, uh, I don't know. It depends upon the priorities. I think that all cargo types should be equal in their opportunity. But as managers and participants of the transport industry, we need to find some solution which will allow yet today Yet, under the current situation, uh, with the current infrastructure, to do something which will provide every cargo type with equal opportunity to travel to the destinations. But this could be achieved only if we could mutually penetrate the business processes of each other. I mean, the ports, the handling companies, their carriers, uh, and other owners and operators of infrastructure. So this is the main idea I wanted to share. Thank you very much. Nikita, Nikita what about this, um, di this balance for the seaports in St. Petersburg regarding their use of railway? Um, as I said, there's a local factor, 50% of uh, freight turnover remains in St. Petersburg and the rest, other 50%, it's hard to say now in real figures. But basically, most of it goes to Moscow. And here is for Moscow. I think it's clear to everyone that railway transport competes regarding 
the price and transit time with motor transport. But together with that, we see that this competition can be there and there's a certain urgent demand of freight owners and large, for example, Asian electronics holdings. They, in their KPIs, even have the targets for railway transportation. So this cannot be ignored. So this year, from the first container terminal, we launched the regular service to Moscow to kind of uh, promote this. Thanks a lot. Dear colleagues, do we have uh, questions to each other or comments or maybe questions from the audience? No? Then now we'll give the floor to Mr. Alexei Shilo. Please note that we had many speakers. Everyone was to the point, but really fast. And we are a bit against our schedule. So we are highly professional as logistics people. So the question to you is, um, what is your comment regarding everything you've heard, what you noted, what you can promise, like that. Thank you so much for giving me the, finally the floor. Actually, this was a very positive discussion, though initially, well, from the title of this panel discussion, it was meant that there would be a certain competition, but thank God uh, such a term as a fight or competition kind of was kind of left aside. But I noted uh, trust, cooperation, common goals, and the discussion was mostly about that, and I'm very happy about it. Very cultured people, you know, yes, cultured, and they're very constructive and to the point and it's the first time that I'm present at such an interesting discussion when clients customers who work with us they give us hints on some solutions which we can use uh, to pick up the freight for example if some independent survey companies performing a survey very often they ask, will you recommend Russian railways to someone? And usually it is very average. It is not like 90% of clients would recommend Russian railways. But today is a very different format and our colleagues really provided such good inputs. What else could be highlighted? Quite optimistic forecasts regarding all of our main groups of freight, even there, where there are negative trends in the as main scenario, like oil products, even there, it was said that there are certain groups like white oil products for which we could uh, compete. And uh, I would note, especially for those present here in the room, because today, we have uh, heads of our regional departments and the share of railway transport in this kind of freight transportation is not 100%. So there, there are big volumes for which we really need to fight and uh, we need to really get those volumes. Uh, and uh, making predictions is uh, not something that pays back and uh, with coal, for example, we can say that that's a volatile, highly volatile market. But when we speak about coal, we feel those changes right away. And if we were to forecast geography of this transportation, we will see that in 2019, we have the decrease of transportation southwards and domestic transportation. but Coal mostly is shipped to the Far East and we need to prepare our infrastructure, construct it, develop it. And of course, we need to use technological solutions. And coal in the recent decade grew by 36%. And if we look at other products presented here, fertilizers 51%, container 
transportation grew twofold. So the growth is not um, cannot be understood in a single way. So speaking about uh, loading and unloading, it should decrease according to our assessment. Whether it's good or bad is hard to say, but our main task is to be ready to any situation, whatever come comes. So how do we react today? I noted certain points that our colleagues made. Uh, we need to implement more technological solutions in a faster way. And for sure we see this and we are working with that. Speaking about Kuzbas, coal routing there in the West Siberian Road uh, is more than 80% and the average weight of the train in the recent five years grew by 126 tons and the number of heavy trains increased by 30%. So we are trying um, to use coal as an example for our technological solution and for sure it's not the final point because every new challenge will make us find new solutions and that's for sure. As for risk hedging, that was uh, rightly noted and more and more we need to use uh, long-term contractual um, relations because we need to understand that this investment into infrastructure will last and um, for example taking BAM and Transib, the stage one, we have those examples. We expected the geography in the eastern polygon would differ from what we have now. Yakutia had to grow according to our plans but we saw faster growth in Husbas. That was not something we simulated before. So here using contracts and agreements and contractual relations with our clients, we could balance the situation. And it was rightly noted that if we today have uh, overloaded infrastructure somewhere in some points, we need a transparent, um, transparent rules uh, about this infrastructure and who does what. And we have our own understanding of this infrastructure and its um, operations. I think that in our dialogue with the clients we could find solutions uh, to satisfy everyone. So we think that we really need to move in that direction. A lot has been said about tariffs. Actually, tomorrow we were planning such a discussion, but I'm afraid that tomorrow we probably just uh, talk nicely. Tomorrow we hope that it will be a proactive dialogue and we'll try to un understand each other. But nevertheless, I think that today tariff regulation system is in place. We have uh, the system of discounts, but still we have certain reserves here. And you know our positions. In certain areas, uh, in our tariff plans we can be more proactive for certain types of transportation and we can adjust the tariffs and the nation's economy will only benefit from that. I would like to wrap up at some positive point. So we did not have any agreement before but for the recent days I've heard a very right trend or approach that today we need to move forward not from the manufacturer or the possibilities of the railway. We really need to be guided by the consumers of our products and it is only together that we can make our product competitive in the world market. Single-handedly or trying to only deal with the single element, we won't be able to do it, but if the whole chain 
improves the efficiency, the railway people and everyone, and seaports and operators, operator business, then uh, ultimately we'll be able to improve that freight basis we were talking about today. And probably the last uh, conclusion, it was really nice to hear from the consigners that there's freight in the country. We only need some more elaborations. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So, dear colleagues, let's wrap up at this point. Speaking about the consumers, I asked uh, the colleagues about the coal prices. Vastochny, Baltica, Differential. So, so difference is $20 per ton. I mean, westwards is not so attractive than eastwards. So thanks a lot. If no questions from the audience, I would like to thank the panel for this very good, uh, cultured, positive uh, talk. And on the margins, yeah, that will start. Thanks a lot and have a nice evening.